Hello, welcome to The Kitchen Spy. My name is Kate and this is another food haul video for you. And also on the end, there's a fair bit about our trip to Pentra Ivan, which is a prehistoric a burial ground sort of thing uh, in West Wales in Pembrokeshire. Anyway, I hope this video finds you safe and well and that you've managed to get what you want this week. Um, as you'll hear me moaning about on the haul later, actually, there were a lot of things that I couldn't get for myself this week, but um, I don't know why. If anyone's got any clues, let me know. Anyway, I'll leave you with the video. I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to seeing you on the next one, which will be a Meals of the Week on Monday. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy the video and if you do enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps the channel. Thanks for watching. Here's the haul this week and it's actually quite a small one this week. Um, yeah, I just didn't need that much stuff really and um, there's no point buying stuff if you don't need it, is there? So uh, uh, that's uh, the sweeper bit, which is, as you can see, quite a small one and there's lots of space on the counter as well. So uh, anyway, let's have a look at what we bought. So I ordered some pork medallions. I didn't actually take delivery of the delivery as um, I was out. So my husband took delivery and he accepted these, but I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have taken these because they are not British and I tend to try and buy British meat wherever I possibly can. Um, but, you know, we've got them now, so I'll definitely use them. And I'm going to use those for a stir fry. Then we've got um, some 5% fat minced beef. Now, I was having real problems on my shop this week trying to get what I wanted. I wanted some um, some bigger portions of beef and I couldn't I couldn't get the bigger packets and I had trouble with things like green beans and asparagus and you know just loads of things were not available um even chicken thighs weren't available and I'm just wondering if and I don't know how but I'm, I'm wondering if like the the Suez Canal being blocked or something whether that's had a a kind of knock-on effect to the supply chain but um I don't really know much about uh, deep sea shipping of um, vegetables and things. I'm not sure whether they come through the Suez Canal or even on those kind of big um, container ships or not. I don't know. I mean, uh, I know about recycling, but not about uh, food. But I'm just wondering if it's just had a knock on effect. Anyway, it was just for the first time in ages. I just couldn't get loads and loads of things that I wanted and that's possibly why it's a small haul but uh, anyway there you go and then I managed to get these I couldn't get free range British uh, chicken breasts but I did get these room to roam ones which I think means that the chickens live in a bigger barn then some Alpro for cereals and lacto free milk for our teas and things um, then uh, in terms of sandwich meat, we've got some roast ham. I've got a couple of packs of that because that's really nice, actually. It's really nice ham. And then some roast chicken with sage and onion stuffing. And I think I said before, that's actually got gluten-free stuffing, which is really good. And you don't find that very often. Then some salami slices. We had these a couple of weeks ago and they were really nice. So I got these again. And they've said here, look, that the packaging is reduced by 32%. And I'm guessing that's because they come in like a really small packet instead of like the big packets that they would have done. A couple of salmon fillets. And I'll probably do a dal with that. Um, a, a lentil dal. And serve it with that lentil and spinach some flat leaf parsley and um, that'll be for the dal and for use in um, I'm going to be doing a vegetable curry for the charity this week so that then I got these Mexicana slices last week so um, I've actually got the cheese itself this week um, and it's it's quite a small block actually I wish it I wish it had been bigger I didn't realize it was going to be so small but yeah it was lovely uh, someone said to me uh, I can't remember who it was but someone commented that it was a uh, addictive and it is it's really lovely and I 
I was going to make quesadillas um, a couple of weeks ago and never got round to it. So I'm going to do those at some point this week and I should be using those on that on those. Um, while I'm talking about someone who's commented on something, I am way behind on responding to the comments. Um, I think um, I, I will catch up probably at the weekend. So please forgive me if I haven't replied to your comment. I read them all, but having the time to sit down and deal with them when you work full time and at the weekend we were away, it was Easter and things. So yeah, I am making excuses. I appreciate that. But I really do appreciate the fact that people take time and trouble to comment. So I don't want to appear rude and, and not not respond. So forgive me if I haven't responded to your comment yet. I surely will. Then some baby corn and that will be in stir fry as well. Our usual Alpro chocolate desserts. And then I've um, taken the plunge back into cabbage. Uh, but I've got a sweetheart cabbage this week and that's really nice cabbage and I can see inside that it looks really lovely. Cabbage is fab, isn't it? It's one of the things I really hated when I was a kid, isn't it? Funny how your your tastes change. Like, for example, belly pork. We used to have that every week and stew. We used to have that every week and I hated it when I was a kid. And I love those things now, but uh, yeah. I think I just wanted like burgers and chips when I was a kid and those tiny sorry I'm off on one now those tiny little pizzas do you remember um so I grew up in the 70s really um well I was born in the 60s but I suppose my formative years were in the 70s um I was born in 1965, so that makes me 56 this year. Wow. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so um, we, when uh, pizzas first came out and there used to be those tiny little, like, uh, individual size pizzas and they were just cheese and tomato I can I can taste it now. The base was really hard, like cardboard, and it's got tomato on it with a little bit of flavouring and like a smattering of cheese, but goodness they felt like really exotic I don't know whether they still make them because I actually I, I I really quite like that kind of thing but uh, yeah pizzas yeah they come on a bit anyway some vegetable stir fry mix that's not the one I ordered I ordered something uh, in a, a tub but um, anyway that's come so we'll have that with the stir fry some sugar drop tomatoes I managed to get some decent tomatoes this week but uh, again, there was barely any choice on the tomato side of things. I don't know what's going on. I just don't. I hope it's not the shape of things to come or that it's a Brexit issue or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, so some sun dropped tomatoes. Those will be for, um, I'll probably make a, 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 well, not probably. I'm going to make a guacamole to go with the um, quesadilla. And uh, so I'll serve that with some salad as well. Then some British carrots, um, these will be for the vegetable curry amongst other things. Some blueberries, um, we use these on cereals. Purple sprouting broccoli, I've got two packs of those and they're quite big packs. And um, I saw on Instagram someone had boiled their purple sprouting broccoli. So what they ended up with was a beautiful purple liquid um, and green broccoli. So. Um, top tip if you're using purple sprouting broccoli just steam it or, or, or fry it off gently but uh, yeah and uh, I ordered two packs because I couldn't get any green beans and I couldn't get any asparagus it's madness then cauliflower because I'm wanting to do a cauliflower cheese this week as one of the meals and I'll probably do it as um like as the actual meal so I'll do a cauliflower cheese with some bacon in it and I bought a cheese sauce now I, these are just not as nice as your ordinary cheese sauce that you would make yourself but like I said I think before they really help in terms of making sure that you've got your calories on track and things so what I'll do is make this up and half a pack is uh where is it? Half a pack is, sorry, bear with, uh, 111 calories. And then I'll obviously put some um, cheese on the top and I might even put some of the Mexicana cheese on the top. It'd be exotic. Um, some Maris, uh, Maris Piper potatoes and those are for the curry and just general usage. 
brown onions because I can't cope without onions. Uh, bananas because I haven't had those for a while and they're a really good snack and I really like them. Some avocados for the guacamole. I had these um, rare, rare, not rare, uh, ripe and ready avocados last week and they were really nice. They were, um, yeah. Sorry about that. The phone rang. Oh, real life. Uh, anyway, so I had these last week and they were really nice and they're for the guacamole. Some uh, paracetamol and some coriander also for the guacamole. Did manage to get that this week. Some of our favourite baked beans. These are the Branston baked beans and are way our favourite. Some basmati rice, just the microwave rice. And again, I know it's cheaper to buy your own rice and cook your own rice, but this is really easy and also exceptionally good for portion control uh, some english breakfast tea bags so i've got two boxes of those because they were on offer and the offer ran out before i would be buying them again so i bought two boxes and then the decaf version of those for my husband a bottle of gin because we're out of gin at home which is not acceptable under any circumstances then some uh pinotage which is a really good one we like six free range eggs some of this finest seeded loaf uh, gluten free which is really nice apparently some bisto best gravy now we use this my husband obviously well it's obvious to me and it may be to you if you're a regular he has a gluten-free diet but um and this used to be okay on the celiac website but i think it's changed actually but we've never had any issues with it so we're going to carry on using it and it's just i like to make my own gravy if i'm doing a proper roast dinner but if it's just a quick thing in the week then this is just so convenient and it does actually taste really good then some liam perrins and again this has got barley in it so it shouldn't be gluten-free but um, it is actually classed as gluten free because the proportion of gluten in it is so small as to be negligible. And the Celiac Society have said that's OK. Then some of my uh, preferred conditioner, which is really nice. Some tortilla wraps and I'm going to be doing the quesadillas with those. Some tissues because we're out. So I bought three boxes peppercorns again i tried to order them with the grinder and they came without and if i'd have taken the shopping in i would have sent that back because i've got loads of <laughs> got loads of pots and no grinder at the caravan i'm going to have to buy a grinder i think and just forget getting the the, the disposable ones uh, some dijon mustard now i've just used the tesco one this time i normally buy uh, the male one but um this is I, I, I think it might even be something like a quarter of the price and I tend to use it in cooking and uh, and so I'm I'm just gonna try that and see what it's like then some wholemeal bread I forgot to get my own bread last week so this is the Warburton's 400 gram loaf a couple of bottles of Pinot Grigio some tonic to go with the gin and also we drink quite a lot of that on its own. I think I've said before, with a dash of Angostura butter, bitters, not bitter, butters, which is what you put in pink gin. And that's a really nice non-alcoholic drink. Some um, chocolate and salted caramel rice cakes, uh, some upside down and some not. Some toothpaste, some Sensodyne toothpaste, some granola. Oh, the dentist. They rang and asked me if I wanted to go for any, um, an appointment earlier than May, which is when my appointment is, because the dentist had had a um, cancellation, but I, I didn't go. I can't. I need to build myself up to it because I'm terrified. But um, anyway, so toothpaste and then some of the usual pancakes that we get, some granola and finally some sparkling mineral water. So, yeah, altogether, um, not a huge haul for what we normally buy, but we're still going to get some really good meals out of that. 
and um, actually a really good price I think it came in at 149 pounds and 29 pence so that's 149.29 um, if you're leaving at this point thanks very much for watching I really appreciate your support and if you're staying on I'm just going to show you a little bit about our weekend in Ceredigion and I'm going to take you to a prehistoric burial site whoa how exciting um, anyway, thanks very much for watching if you're leaving at this point. Take care. See you soon. So, um, yeah, the journey that we went on here, this walk, it's about it was about four and a half miles walk. And it starts at this place, which is called the Earth Centre, which is an educational facility and a bunkhouse. Um, and Earth, U R D D in Welsh means guild. And uh, they've got a couple of centres around the place and they help to educate and, and give children opportunities as well. So into the woods uh, we go, which and this is um, the tea kennel and quid pentra ivan. Um, quid is wood. And the entrance is, as you can see, quite ancient. And this is a really ancient woodland. And I shared a photograph of this marsh marigold on my community page the other day. And it was just so striking because in this, in the middle of this huge patch of horrid mud, there was just this bright, bright, shiny marsh marigold. Anyway, here we are at Pentra Ivan. So this is a Neolithic burial chamber. And that means it's about... 5,000 years old and in the background there you can see Carningley um, which is a, a hill that we've seen before and um, it's it's kind of uh, the biggest hill really around here and uh, so you can see it from lots and lots of places but what a fabulous place honestly to be <laughs> buried so the principles of it are that it was originally uh, covered in uh, soil and lots of other rocks as well, so under a cairn. And this is all explained on the signpost here. And i am just got a bit of film of it because I just think it's so fascinating. And the woodland actually around it, that is um, ancient woodland um, around kind of, well, thousands and thousands of years ago this part of Wales and most of Wales was covered by ancient woodland and this uh, woodland which we are going to see a bit more of in a moment um, is actually um, some of the most ancient woodland and actually it was there before this before Pentra Ivan which is around 5,500 years ago so it's just absolutely amazing it's a magical place so we came here years ago when we'd got our other dogs, so not Jess, we'd got um, a dog called Juno, who was a black and white collie, and a dog called Ruby, who was a red and white collie. And when we came here, Juno howled. She just like, um, as soon as we kind of got up to the stones, she started howling. And that just means, I think, that this really is some kind of spectacular place. And there's definitely something spiritual and lovely about it. Um, it really is something to behold you can see there across to the sea um, and this is me standing under the stone and the stone on the top they estimate weighs about 16 tons so I was being very very brave and even today look people are making their own tributes and these were some painted stones and a daffodil and a little candle and that says bro my guru which I think is probably got a sad tale attached to it Anyway, so um, it's full on lambing season in Wales at the moment and here are some sheep and some lambs and uh, yeah, it's just really nice to see them and at the moment when the lambs are, uh, well, when the ewes are being fed, the lambs kind of charge around in uh, little groups and they look so happy and delightful. Uh, I'll try and get some footage of that if I can. And this is just going into the tea kennel 
uh, side of the woodland and these trees some of these trees are just amazing I mean look at this this is just spectacular and also you have to walk down this really ancient pathway um, it was quite hard to walk on actually because it's very rocky underfoot but I bet it's seen uh, a few a few people walk down here in, 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 in the time it's been here and this woodland was absolutely I, I just can't uh, I, I can't tell you how it felt I can't tell you how it felt I'm about to tell you <laughs> how it felt it just felt really magical like um well it was just spectacular we have made a promise to ourselves that we're going to go back in uh, when spring has sprung and things are um a bit more grown and there are leaves and things on the trees and i think in order to keep this um, land um working well and good biodiversity and things they actually have ponies in the woodland who are kind of scavenge on the floor of the woods as well so yeah I just wanted to share this with you because it really is so spectacular and then as part of the Easter weekend as well we just went on a, a walk local to where our caravan is and we saw this Easter tree and this little Easter um I don't know what you'd call it um I don't know Easter um I don't know what to call it Lots of Easter things all together. Yeah, you can choose your own word. And so that's it. A haul and um, a hopefully not too boring view of West Wales in Pembrokeshire. And I am very grateful if you've got this far in the video. I always value your support. Um, and I think, as I said earlier in the video, I'm a bit behind on replying to comments and I will do my best to sort that out this coming weekend. So in the meantime, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. If you're already a subscriber, thank you. And if you're not yet and you feel like you might want to, there'll be a button popping up soon. It would be great to have you on board for hauls, meals of the week and recipes. Anyway, that's the end i am waffling enough so you take care you look after yourself and those that you love and i hopefully see you on the next one take care bye bye